How are you doing? How's it? How's it Yep. 
Got a few more people signing in, so I'm just waiting for them to come in. We'll get going. started, what do you say? Yeah? Father, we pray that thy spirit will give 
quantum land still that will uh, continue to receive great uh, safety and security in these West Virginia. We pray for in the name of Christ and Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. about the, the why. why. Why are we here? Why are we doing this? Um, what is this really for? Um, can I get all of the youth that are here to stand up? We've got some up here, back here. Great. What's these really large youth? You guys are very intimidating. Awesome. Um, first and foremost, we're here for you. This is, this is your activity. And we're all here to assist you guys in having a, a, a tremendous learning um, experience, a growing experience spiritually, and a fun experience, most of all. And so we're here for you. This is your activity. Um, you guys, sit down. thank you very much for being here. We appreciate that. Um, for you leaders that don't have to hear it, make sure that this information um, gets back to the youth. And everything we're going to share with you tonight, pretty much all of it, can be found online. The internet is an amazing thing. The mountain men would have loved the internet. The only way that they had to learn something, the only, the only way that they could learn something was by somebody else teaching them, somebody that they knew, somebody older, somebody wiser, you know, delivering that information directly to them, uh, or just figuring out um, by trial and error. In our day and age, we have an internet that with a few strokes of a, of a, of a key um, keyboard, we can learn just about anything we want. So, the information we're going to give you tonight is it's just going to be, it's kind of the, the mountain man's Pinterest. We're just going to show you some things. We're, going to, we're just going to explain some things and show you some things just to give you some ideas. Then you guys can take that. You can go back and say, okay, we wanted this. We wanted to do that. Um, let's look up some of these types of things. And, and that's going to give you more ideas. Um, and then you can start just kind of deciding what you want to do. There's, there's a short time frame between now and rendezvous. And we know that. And we've got school coming up right away. And there's a lot going on there. And so we know that there's a, a lot going on in your lives. Rendezvous was not um, supposed to take all of your time and all of your effort. Uh, that's not what we wanted to do. We do want you guys to work together as forms. We want you youth to lead out uh, with, with ideas and with things that you want to do. And then go we'll do those things. Um, because that's how we grow and that's how we develop. The other thing is, just like a, at a trek, I don't know if any of you have been on a trek, but when you go to a trek or you go uh, on any kind of sporting event or team, um, when they're all when they're all uniform, they all look the same. When they all look together, they prepared in that kind of fashion. They have a much better experience. So we do want you to do some preparation. That doesn't mean you need to look like this. You might only have time to make a knife or to do one or two things. That's fine. But at least you've done something and you've done it as a forum. It's brought you together and brought you to rendezvous a little more prepared to then have a bigger experience, okay? And that's what we're hoping for. If you can get a whole bunch of things done, awesome. Um, if, if you only get one or two things done as a form because you've got other things planned or there's other things going on, then that's great. Um, most of all, first and foremost, we want you to be there. And we want you to make sure that all of your friends, all of, your, uh, all of, all of the teachers, all of your, the other uh, youth in your state are all coming and having this great experience. Okay, so now I'm on to move. I, some of you might have heard some of this before, but I just want to reiterate what Mount Man Rendezvous is all about. Um, in the early 1800s, we started, we started pushing west into the, the wild frontier. We started pushing west to see what was out there. We started pushing west um, for, for a big part uh, to, get, to get fur, because furs were worth a lot of money. So uh, frontiersmen would go out, they would trap, and they, would, they would get furs, and they would bring them back, and they'd sell them. And a good, a good trapper was earning more than a skilled tradesman back in town. Two to three times more. So a watchmaker, a, a, a doctor, a, a blacksmith, you can make more money being a frontiersman in trapping. So that sounds exciting. That sounds fun, right? And, and for, um, it, it was fun <laughs> and exciting. But a lot of dangers came with that. When you go out to the frontier, there's a lot of things. There's, there's starvation. Um, there's the weather, uh, there's accidents that happen, there's wild animals, there's Indians. There's hundreds of things that can happen. There's getting lost, physically just getting lost and never finding your way back out. Um, there's, there's hundreds and hundreds of things that can happen to, to people as they first were going into this uh, frontier. And so to make it safer, most of the young men who went out were all going 
out and trapping companies. And so trapping companies would hire young men. They'd put out advertisements looking for 100 young men to come out with this trapping company. And they would all go out as a brigade. And they would go out um, and they'd be part of this, this brigade. And in that brigade, they'd be broken up. They'd have people cooking meals. They'd have people taking care of camp. They'd have people out actually trapping and running trapping lines. And then they'd switch up. And they would run this very tight, this tight organization. And the person in charge of that organization was the Bushway. So for this one, go on your Bushway. And so um, it was a very controlled and very um, tightly organized thing. And rules had to be followed. And if they weren't followed, not only would you not do well and would you not um, end up getting a lot of uh, getting a lot of furs and making a lot of money, but you could actually end up losing your life. In 1821, um, James Pate was bringing uh, 116 um, new new trappers out of Santa Fe, and at the end of the year, only 16 were left alive. So it was a very dangerous thing. It was a very difficult thing. And for these young men, it wasn't, it wasn't just because they, they, were, they, they just weren't good enough. Um, that you had to be on top of it. You had to stay on your toes. You had to follow the rules. You had to follow the guidelines that were given to you. And you had to, to, to know where you were at at all times. And so if you followed these principles, then you were going to be OK. And because of this, these experiences, uh, we, we celebrate that today. We know there's a lot of mountain men, a lot of frontiersmen who made a big name for themselves because they went on to do big, great things. Even after the fur trade was over, they went on to do great things. And for the pioneers, they did a lot of great things, helping, helping people come to the West. All right? And so I want you to know that in our day and age, we have guides. Right? We've got people who lead us and guide us and give us instruction to keep us alive and keep us from getting off the path. It's a different path, all right? Uh, we're not physically dying. We don't have hundreds and millions of, of young LDS men physically dying, but we have lots and lots of LDS young men who are spiritually getting lost, who are spiritually dying. Um, and we want to make sure that doesn't happen. We're trying to, we're trying to install, instill, excuse me, trying to instill skills um, and, and principles that you can use to help you in your entire lives. As you come to Mount Man Rendezvous, what you're going to see is we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to do a lot of activities. It's going to be unlike anything you've ever seen um, in the scale. And what you're going to see, though, is everything we do is tied right back to spiritual principles that will help you and bless your lives. And later, someday, when you think back to throwing a uh, throwing a, a, a knife or a hawk, right? You're not just going to think about that, but you're going to think about that, and it's going to tie to some spiritual principle that's going to help and be a blessing to you. That's what we're looking for. That's what we want to have happen. And so we're excited for this. Uh, I want to read one of, these, one of these things out of the scripture. This is in 3rd Nephi. It says, And now behold, my joy is great, even unto fullness, because of you, and also this generation, yea, and even the Father rejoiceth, and also all the holy angels because of you and this generation. For none of them are lost. That's still our Heavenly Father's goal now. He doesn't want any of us, any of you, to be lost. And so we're, we, uh, we're going we're gonna to help, try to help instill good things that will help you guys not only have fun, but help you guys through the next few years and, and rest of your life to, to not be lost, to know where you are, know who you are, know where you're going. And just like it's been 200 years, some of the mountain men, some of the frontiersmen that we have, we still know their names. We still celebrate them, right? Well, in, in another 100 years, 200 years, I know that there will be people who celebrate your names, who celebrate you because you didn't get lost, because you stayed strong and you did the things that you were supposed to led a good life, and you made it, and we're a blessing. And so that's my testimony, and I want to show it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right, we've got some fun tonight. Um, tonight ended up with a little, a little different than what we normally do, um, but what we're going to do is we're going to cover two main things. First of all, we're going to cover um, regalia, and when I say regalia, it's what the mountain men wore, okay? So when we, when we do mountain man cosplay, okay, we call that regalia. And so it's what it's what you're gonna wear when you go up there. Uh,
We're going to give you some ideas. Like I said, we're going to give you some ideas of things you can do to prepare yourself and get ready for rendezvous and where when you get up to rendezvous. Now, again, not every person up there needs to be in regalia, but if you are, I, we've seen and we've talked to boys for, for 25 years we've been doing this. The boys who, who put a little effort into some regalia, they feel together. They feel like they're a quorum. They feel like they're united and they have a better experience. And so there's a few things that we can do. Now, the other thing I want to point out is this. Every board is different. Every form is different. Your funds are different. Your time is different. Um, your resources are different. So not everyone needs to do the same thing. So just know what you have and what you're working with, uh, and then and then you know proceed from there. Some 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 of you guys have a whole bunch of moms with sewing machines. You can all sew shirts. And all this. That's awesome. Do it. Some of you you know nobody in the entire state owns a sewing machine. That's fine. There's other there's other ways to get that done. Right? So just kind of look at what we're showing you and say, yeah, we can do this, we can do that, and, and, and get some ideas, and then take those ideas and, and then start looking those things up. If at any point that you're doing this, you have questions, you can get a hold of myself, you can get a hold of Cole Ellerton, who is uh, charcoal, he is my segundo, he's my, he's my main man. Uh, you can get a hold of us or any other mountain man that you know of, and in every state there's, there's several. Uh, you can hold of any of us and ask questions, and, and we'll give you information. But like I said, the, the biggest thing is just the internet. Within a few keystrokes, and you're going to get you're going to get a bunch of good information. A lot of the uh, the places that we knew of, a lot of the places that we used to resource stuff, a lot of those were small, and and with COVID, they're just not there anymore. I, I've been to several of them, and they're just there's just not stuff there. There's still stuff out there, but a lot, a lot of the stuff, the list we used to hand out, just just aren't accurate right now. So if you just do searches and start looking, you're going to find it. Okay, let's let's get into some of the uh, some of the regalia. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to first take you through some of, of the regalia with my boys. Now, what we what we used to do, and if at any point of this you have any questions, please raise your hand. Uh, what we used to do is we used to say, "Here's all the stuff you can make." Um, but it was kind of difficult for especially new, brand new leaders. They're like, "Do I make all this? What what do I need to make? What don't I need to make?" How difficult is this? How much time is it going to take? I'm going to show you some of the really simple things that I feel like have the best bang for the for the time and for the buck. So I'm going to need you two young men, and you right here in the blue. Yeah, why don't you come up here? Yeah, right there. I'm grabbing these guys because they're small. Most of my stuff is really small. Okay. So do these here? We're going to have you guys stand just like this. What are your names? Logan. Clark. Okay, Logan, Clark, and Adam. These guys look like mountain men. <laughs> Inside they're mountain men, but on the outside, they may not look like mountain men yet. So let's let me show you a couple things. Okay, first of all, okay, even though they're not wearing these, the easiest thing you can do for pants is just have your youth just wear khakis. If they wear khakis, um, if they just wear khakis or or other you know dark uh, like cotton type pants, they're gonna look great. They're going to fit right in. They don't need leather pants. Um, you can do this. There are several things you can do with just regular pants. I've seen you can take different color material. You can cut fringes and just sew them down the side of just a regular pair of pants. And now you have pants that have fringes and they look great and they're cool. And that's a fun thing to do, right? So you can alter them. Um, these actually, when my, when my kids wore these when they were really little, uh, you can go to Goodwill and you can pick up pants like that if you're going to do something to them. They don't want to mess up their own pants. Or they can just wear school khakis, uh, right? Right as school starts, they're all brand new. Uh, but you can wear you can wear regular pair of khakis, and, and they're gonna look great. They're gonna fit right in. So any kind of natural natural material. Okay. The next thing. Sorry, guys. I'll get to you in one second. I'm a little out of order here. Okay. The next thing is shirts. I think shirts is the most important thing because. Um, at night, a lot of times it gets really cold, and they put on big old coats, and they cover up whatever they're wearing anyway, same thing in the morning, and then the sun comes out, and they take their coats off, they strip everything off, and all they have on all day long is a shirt. And so if they have a shirt, they're going to look good, and they're going to they're gonna feel good all day. The only thing is if you make one shirt, just make sure they wear an undershirt under it. It's three days, and these young men doing hardcore activities, they're going to stink on the way home, okay? So a couple different shirts. Here's, here's what our boys have done. This should look familiar. This is, this is my board up here. This is what they did. They just bought t-shirts, long, long sleeve t-shirts. They cut the middle, 
they cut the middle down and kind of sewed it. Um, you can either put leather on there or leave that up. And then they dyed it. And what did you dye it with? Craig Nelson? What did what'd you guys use? It just coffee or tea or yeah, something we you weren't supposed to buy in the first place? <laughs> that we used uh, just coffee. And I don't remember what, uh, what was else in it. Somebody else made it for us, but okay. that was dipped in. Okay, so then they just put the shirt in there. They let it soak. And it's okay if it ends up all blotchy and stuff. Because white shirt, white shirt, white. Yeah, white. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, yeah, start out white. And, and then. It's cheaper when you buy a whole. Good. So just buy a whole bunch. <laughs> The mountain clothes were really blousy. The reason, a couple reasons why they're blousy is because they were working shirts. First of all, you need a movement. We didn't have stretching materials. It was all cotton or muslin, uh, and so they were big. The other thing is, is we didn't have millions of sizes of everything. It was kind of like, here's one shirt, and it's going to fit, you know, 70% of you in here. And so it's okay if, they're, if it's big and blousy and long, if the sleeves get long, um, if, they're, if they're too bad, you can just put rubber bands in them, you know, pin them back with rubber bands where they're tight. But it's okay that they're big and they're long and they're, and they're too, way too big. That, that works. And so um, what Brother Nelson was saying up here is if you get, get them in, in um, large quantities, order them on Amazon, you know, get 15 of them at once, you're going you're gonna to save a bunch of money. It's going to be really cheap. And then you can take something like this, just stain it, and then you end up with a great mountain man shirt for all your boys, and that, that department is done. I was just going to say, I was just going to say, because you make them all together, even though they're kind of nondescript, you can identify your kids from across the camp. Yeah. Because you know the style, you know the you know the look. You can identify your young men from a long ways away, and it's a good thing. Okay, they're a team. Good. And that's that's exactly it. They're gonna feel like they're a team. They're gonna feel like they're unified. They're gonna feel like they're doing they're doing something together. And you know what? So everyone doesn't show up in the same white shirt that, that has been dyed in coffee. You can dye this in other colors. You can do them in black, you can do them in green, you can do them in uh, in, in any of those kind of colors. Um, Go to Joanne's and get, there's the Ritz dyes that have every color you want. You got it. So the other thing is, is this is a shirt that we sewed up for one of my kids when he was little. He was doing a, a little Davy Crockett thing. But this can be done in, the, in a larger scale. Um, you can actually just sew a shirt. There's lots of, there's patterns and they're really simple because they don't have to look great and they're big and they're, they're, they're lousy anyway. And so you can do this. Um, I know that the dish, uh, Deseret sells them for like Trek and stuff. You can find shirts. I mean, they're, they're, like, they're like 12, 18 bucks for a shirt if, if you want something like that. All of these that you make can be used later for Treks when you do Treks. So just know that that's a thing. Um, okay, so that's, that's shirts um, for my stuff. Oh, another thing I just wanted to point out. So I've, looked, I've been to and looked at Goodwills for years. So a lot of my stuff that I'm going to say I got at Goodwill, it wasn't like I went to Goodwill, there's a whole mountain man section. But there's, there's a ton of stuff if you keep looking and you know what you're looking for. If you go to the women's section and you look for women's blouse shirts, you're going to find tons of shirts that work awesome because they're poofy sleeves and they're the right material. Um, whether if, Even if they button down the front, that's fine. Just button them up and they're, they're going to look great. This, this is a woman's blouse. It's, just, it's brown. Well, it's hard to see. But anyway, once it's buttoned up, once you put some, some necklaces on and stuff, I mean, it looks great, okay? So you can go and you can just start looking for stuff too. If you don't all want to be the exact same, but you just want to be mountain man, you can do that. Okay, now, on to you guys. Logan, right? No, I, well, at least I got one name, right? Logan, Adam, and Clark. All right, that's the last time I'm gonna do that, because that's as good as it's gonna get, okay. This right here came from Goodwill, but I, I've seen I've seen quorums that make these. Okay, what I have here is just a just a big old just a big old sheet. You can do this out of uh, um, canvas, drop cloth. You can buy drop cloth and just cut a bunch of these. And then what you have here is you've got a uh, what, I don't even know what you call this. What do you call this? Poncho. Thank you. There you go. So now you've got a poncho. This here is a capote. A capote is a mountain man coat. Okay, this is this is legitimately what the what the, the mountain men would wear. They take a, a, a wool blanket and cut it into a capote. We have patterns we can give you for capotes if you want to make capotes. Again, it goes by what kind of time and effort you have. If you don't have very much time and you don't have, um, I've seen a lot of teams make these out of really cheap, not even real wool, just really really like a cheap fabric. And after all the work and the effort, they fall apart. Um, and then if you spend a lot of money with good fabric, you know, with a good wool blanket, and then you make
make this, and then you wear it for two days, and then you go on a mission and you come back and it doesn't fit you, then that's kind of a bummer. So for us leaders, it's great. We can do this. For the youth, just decide, does that fit into what you're doing? If it does, they look great. Okay? And so what it is, is it's a hooded coat, essentially, that's made out of one blanket, and then it's cut up, and it's sewn together. This one I got on eBay for $25. Now, it's got a lot of wearing, a lot of holes all, all over it, but for 25 bucks, I didn't care. That was easier than sewing it up. I'm going to have you put this on, Bart. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Here's my next one. Excuse me. Yeah. So how, how long would you estimate you would need to dedicate for if, if you got... Please stand up, please. Stand up. And real loud. This is, this is Fred, by the way. This is Boss Lopper. Boss Lopper. Uh, yeah, we're <laughs> Right. Uh, sorry. If you got about four, depends on how many young men you have in your four, if you had, you know, one or two boys per sewing machine, you could probably knock them out in one or two nights, making them their coats out of the blankets. Yeah. And you can get them at Army surplus, but I'd go online and do it now ASAP before they're gone. Usually prior to this event, we have so many young men that would go up. The leaders all go snatch up all the army surplus blankets, and those are really the best ones. Um, Anson was right. You want to make sure it's a little bigger than the boy is, so you can grow into it. Or even a lot bigger. And get a, a somewhat decent material. My, one of my leaders of my board for my boy bought the lining under the carpet of your car. He got a whole bunch of it and was almost free. And the first one that went through the washing machine. So, and the lid filter was a one for me. I made, I made my first one, and then I made myself a second one. And it's it's almost like I'll never give that thing up because I got my blood, sweat, and tears into it. It's a nice component. So for us, for, us, for us leaders, it's a fun thing. It's an awesome thing. You're going to be doing this for years. Even if you're not working with the youth, you're welcome to come up and be a part of it. Do it. Um, for your youth, that totally depends on your situation. It's yeah. Really it is, it is, but you've got to be really organized because you're going to have to have patterns so that they can cut. You, you know, you, you have to have your whole thing set up. Like a sweatshop. Yeah, sweatshop. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, one to two nights is if you're really organized, because otherwise, otherwise it's a, it's a fight. But if you're, if you're interested in doing that, there's information online, there's, there's us you can, again, reach out to, and, and we'll walk you through that. If, that. if that fits where you guys are at, what you're doing, that's awesome. But again, I've seen a lot of boys who, they, they only, they put on at night, but because they're not really great wool blankets, they're wearing a coat over it. And then they do the same thing in the morning, as soon as the sun comes out, then it gets left in a tent, and then they don't wear all day long. So, it's kind of like, it looks great, but they don't spend very much time in it. Okay, this one here is a really great fake um, fur coat. Yep, here we go. Where is it? And this also came from Goodwill. Look how good that looks. <laughs> this, all, all my boys have fought over this one. All they need is necklaces. That's right. Let's do. Let's get. Let's get that on. Let's get that on. Okay. There. No kidding. First, we're gonna start with medicine pouches. The medicine pouch is a little pouch. Anyway, is a little pouch that would hold your good medicine. Um, you know, the mountain men, the Indians, they didn't, they didn't have a, a CVS. They kept stuff with them that they could actually use in case of an accident or in case of injury or things that were important to them. The, you know, your most valuable trinkets and possessions. Um, they would make little pouches and hang them around their neck and put their, put their stuff in them. So we're going to, oops, sorry about that. It hurts to be a mountain man, doesn't it? Okay. That, that one right there is just, just a chunk of leather. By the way, I got a ton of leather from uh, Arizona Creative Leather, Creative Leather Furniture. They get these leather samples, these big, these big, almost foot by one foot square samples, and then they're constantly getting new samples, and they throw them away. And so I was in there, and I said, hey, do you have any? And he handed me a big garbage bag full of leather samples. And so we made a whole bunch of these guys out of them. Question. Yeah, please. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, right here. Uh, my board, a couple of Ronnie Lusabelle, they went to like a furniture reupholstery place or something like that. 
furniture started to face up and they uh, grabbed all the scraps that they were done using for redoing furniture and stuff. And yeah, same thing, he had a 50 pound bag of his old leather scrap and they just went to town making air sheets, medicine, that just whatever they could. They had every sort of color and just started going. And like they just, oh, here, these are our trash. So very, very cheap and easy to get. You can also, uh, you know, Goodwill and the Annie and Garage sell, which is Goodwill. They'll have a leather couch there, it's got a slice in the middle of it. Just go up, take that all apart, and then we, we got three leather couches at Goodwill for five bucks a piece in a garage sale, and everyone had leather chaps. And if you're in Gilbert, if you're in Gilbert, drive around a big trash pickup, you'll see couches. Just take your knife, cut the whole back out, even though it's not real leather, cut the whole back out, and you can make all kinds of stuff out of this stuff. Okay? So there's there's ways to gather this stuff. Um, but you need to start looking now. Okay, I'm gonna show you a couple of necklaces. Necklaces are great. Mountain men wore necklaces, Indians wore necklaces, necklaces um, were important, they were meaningful, but they were also used for barter and for trade. They weren't just for decoration and hey, I look good. Um, but we were because we look good. But but we but they also wore them. Um, a bunch of these my kids bought when they went to Goodwill. So like ten cents, my, my son bought this. It's like bamboo and some kind of green, some kind of some kind of green beads on there. Um, these beads, you can find beads. There, there were places you can get beads. Really, you can put that on the paper yourself. So I don't hurt you guys. Um, beads, um, beads, uh, tea, all that kind of stuff. Um, you can you can find places online if you start looking. Just make just make sure you're finding them kind of cheap. Is it? Yeah, just put that one on. Okay, and this here. Sorry. Um, again, these are all just wood beads. Uh, these are plastics. And this right here is an arrowhead that I made at my very first rendezvous at the foot napping station. I started out big, so if I screwed up and it ended up getting to kind of look like an arrowhead, so I just stopped at that point. Uh, who needs this? Right here? Okay, there we go. All right, anyway, claws, teeth, there's all kinds of stuff. Uh, doesn't need to be real. If you're a leader and you want to spend some money and you want to get uh, some real claws, these are these are real bear claws. My, my brother shot a bear and he was getting rid of these. I'm like, I want those, and I made a necklace out of them. Um, but if you can get a hold of nicer stuff, do that. For your boys, uh, even the plastic stuff is fun. It looks great. They're going to feel great. It's going to go in with, with their regalia stuff someday, and it's going to be wonderful. Okay, all of these hats, I've got this kind of outback looking looking hat. Straw hat. All of these came from Goodwill. This is some kind of uh, like a, a cool Italian Italian deal. Um, your your cowboy hats. If you get them wet and punch them out, they're going to be great mountain man hats. So, and then you just add some leather to them. There we go. Which, which one of these? Which one of these? There you go. Oh, a little smaller there. Okay, a couple other things. Okay, this this bag here, this bag, this pouch, is called a haversack. Okay, um, a haversack is just a simple bag that has a, a top flap that flaps down. It's just a simple bag to put your stuff in. Um, it's just a shoulder bag. Here, throw this over your shoulder, and we'll show everyone what it looks like. There you go. So, when you have all of this little, these knickknacks and the stuff you're picking up, the stuff you're making, you're like, I don't have pockets, where to put all this? It goes in your haversack. And you need a haversack. These haversacks were made from drop cloth from Home Depot. Just painter's drop cloth. And you can buy a whole bunch of drop cloth for not much, and then you just sew it up. And it's essentially just a rectangle, and you can make it about any, any way you want, or any size you want. Okay, yeah, you wear that one. Um, I traded for this one. Some young man made this and traded me for it. And this is out of some kind of fake bear fur. So here, go ahead. Oh, that'll match. Look at you. You're all. You're all. Right. Yeah. All right, that works. Okay. So. Okay. So now, oh, so now I'm going to show you. So I made. I made one out of, again, fake leather. I just had this old toe strap 
and, and some leather, and I, and I put one together for uh, the last one I want to do because I had paperwork I needed to carry all day long. Okay? So I, I put one together for myself out of that guy. Uh, there's belt bags. You can make little bags that go on your belt. Okay? They just slip right over your belt, and that's where lots of your little, little cool things go. Okay? This was all fringed out. This belt, by the way, it used to be way longer. I cut it out for one of my sons. Um, uh, just women's belts. If you just go to Goodwill, buy women's belts, and, and they're going to work. A lot of the women's belts have big, huge, giant buckles, because that's really fashionable, and that looks great. So here's another woman's belt. And it's got a knife that one of my sons made for his rendezvous. And it's got a belt bag that I made at my second or third rendezvous. So it just has, just has these uh, straps on the back, goes around your belt, and again, it's a big pocket. So who, who wants to wear this around their waist? Here, why don't we have somebody, yours will you know, get covered up. All right, so. Hey, how are you doing? Yeah. yeah. I got a pro tip. Please do. So when you come up to the rendezvous, and the boys have made all this awesome stuff, or some of it, maybe they can make two and trade one at the trading blanket. <coughs> Just the FYI. Good. And we'll then they get something from Trader Joe, and they can fix that up like a rabbit fur or something, and embellish on that. Then they can take it back to the Trader Joe and trade up something more. They could end up with a nice, you know, Bowie knife or whatever. Awesome. Yeah, That's right. Yeah. Awesome. Absolutely. Make 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 more stuff. Um, again, not every Goodwill is going to have these. I found these at Goodwill. These are literally leather moccasins. They're in Goodwill for two bucks. So they're too small for me, but I, I just I kept them. My boys have worn them. Uh, these and they have, they have a sole on them. They're they're like uh, slippers, but they look great. Again, so you can find stuff at Goodwill. This is great. Um, Okay, uh, I think I just have kind of one more thing I want to show you, and then we'll do we'll one. Wine yes, this is my wine bottle. Okay, this is. Sorry, that's right. This this is a canteen that I made. Now this is super easy and super fun to make. Okay, you you have to have good leather to do it though. Uh, it's tooling leather, and you just have a, a flat piece of tooling leather. And what you do is you take your design, whatever you want it to be, straight, square, uh, square is easiest because you take one piece and essentially fold it in half. And then we took a drill press and we just drilled holes. And if it's one piece, it's just going to fold in half. And then you just drill holes down the sides and then you sew. You just, you just sew it together. And then what you do is you get it wet. Okay, you soak it. And then you pack it full of sand. And you let that sand dry. So once it's dry, then you dump that sand out, you put some rocks in there, and you get all that, you get all that sand out, and then you put hot beeswax. You get boiling hot beeswax and you put it in. Now this is just that pink leather that you're used to seeing that's not even stained, just that bright pink leather. That's what this is. The beeswax soaks right in and creates like this hard, this, this hard surface. And because it's wax, it's waterproof. These seams are all waterproof, everything's waterproof. Um, you can use a cork. I just used a, a piece of two by four that I that I whittled down to fit in here, put wax on it, and it, it holds water. Okay? And mine mine started out just being just this long tube thing, but when it blew out, it actually pulled the sides in, which I didn't expect. Um, but but you can make a canteen, and a canteen is super cool, and it's something that these boys can have mm -hmm. their whole lives. Um, something else, can I show yours? You might Please help yourself. Yeah. Okay. This is this is the gun goes right here. Uh, his is awesome because his is just an actual water bottle that he wrapped in leather. Um, you're going to need water when you go up there. There, there aren't drinking fountains. There aren't, there, 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 you know, there's not, there's not water at all of the outposts. You're going to want to carry water with you. So, and it's fine to just have a water bottle. That's, that's totally cool to just bring a water bottle. But if you have some of that leather we talked about, if you have some of that extra stuff, you can start wrapping stuff in it and it's going to look super cool. It's going to look great. And then it's going to be just part of your gear um, that you're going to feel good about and it's, it's going to be good. Okay, let's look at these guys. So I may stand here long enough. First of all, are you warm? Yeah, it's, it's warm to wear all this stuff, which is great when you're outside and it's freezing. Um, but do these guys look like mountain men? Yeah, let's give a hand. Um, 
What's going to happen is during the middle of the day it's just too hot. They're going to and, and they're going to be a lot doing a lot of active stuff. The jackets are going to come off, of course, and then we're left with this. And these guys still look great right now. They still look great, but if they had shirts on, they'd, they'd still be 100 percent. And so I just wanted to kind of show that the you know once you get a shirt on, you get a few things around your neck, you get a, you know you make a knife, uh, you, you're, you're kind of set. You, you feel good, you look good, and, and you're you're a mountain man. Um, oh, one other thing that I didn't bring that I was gonna that I was gonna bring is uh, hats are hard to find, right? Hats are hard to do. You can do a do rag, which is actually traditionally more um, more widely used. A big a big square of cloth and material. They would they would tie that just like you would tie a normal do rag, and they would wear that. It was multi use. Uh, got used all all day long for all kinds of things, but also protected them and. And all the boys will look good. They won't have like sun protection, but they'll all look good. They'll be uniform. They'll have something on their heads. And that again is super easy, super cheap. Gary Jones, please. Super easy is a stocking cap like what you got on. That's right. You know, somebody who knits, crochets, or you can order. So a lot of a lot of fun things. Um, there's a, a lot of a lot of other ideas and things as well. Um, what kind of questions? Of course, with the stuff I've covered so far. I'm gonna have you know what? Well, why don't you come up real quick? Yeah, I just have a couple you, things. Yeah, please show show me your things, then we'll discuss. Do you need these guys here, or should they start? No, you guys can sit down. Okay, you guys can start taking just all the stuff off and just put on the table. I just have a couple other things I want to throw out. Hanson pretty much covered everything. Uh, this is a this is a possibles bag, over the shoulder haversack, whatever. Um, I I discovered that. Working or being active all day long, this thing swings around in front of me. It drives me nuts. I prefer the belt pouch. Just a pro tip right there. Cowboy hats at the Goodwill store. You can find them. They're cheap. For all kinds of feathers. Anything you want on there. Uh, this is a really cheap, easy idea. You get a coyote fur, skunk fur, any kind of fur. About six to eight bucks. Really cheap. Take an old baseball hat. Cut the brim off of it, a few strategic stitches just to keep it in place, and boom, you got a genuine mountain man fur hat. Super <laughs> easy, looks great, they're fun, still got the coyote face on it here. Good for bald heads, good for bald <laughs> guys. Where I would recommend it. Paul, where do you get the furs? Uh, online. Can't think of the name of the stores off the top of my head. Amazon, they're all over the place. And it doesn't even have to be real fur. You can probably find fake stuff even cheaper. Uh, years and years and years ago, I was a varsity coach. And I got thrown into the Mountain Man gig. A bishop called me and said, hey, how's preparations for Mountain Man going? I said, Bishop, we're not going. He goes, oh, yeah, you are. You're going to go. <laughs> that was the best thing that ever happened to me. We had about the same amount of time to prepare, and this is what we did. This is our first mountain man get up. Khaki pants, an old uh, shirt that I used to pass the sacrament in and cut the collars off. Sewed some fringe around the shoulders. They look great, they're cheap, easy to do. Everybody, everybody looks good. More importantly, spend time with your team. You don't have to do you don't have to do pants. You don't have to do knives. You don't have to do hats. Figure out what people are interested in and just be together. Enjoy doing this stuff together. That's the whole point. More white shirts dyed with random stuff which you probably shouldn't dye with. Super cheap, easy to do. You can pull the, the factory buttons off and find hardwood. Pecan works really great. Old dead branches of pecan. Snap off small pieces. Drill a hole through it, have somebody on the bench grinder round off the two ends. They look fantastic. They look like legitimate mountain man beads. There's nothing that says that you got to go with the styles that we're showing here. Variety is awesome. You can do whatever you want. Get creative, spend time together, have fun. That's the whole point. I think that's about all I got. Any questions, concerns, challenges anybody's having, <coughs> suggestions? Those of you that are seasoned mountain men with pro tips, what share are these them well. Patterns? You said you have a pattern with the pro and the fence. Yeah. Um, so the, we, we have we have patterns that are going to be on the website. I don't know if they're, they're I don't know if they're up there now, Jared. Do we have are the patterns up now? The, the, is the resource guide up there? 
Uh, they'll be on the website. But that's the other thing. If, if you just go to YouTube and type in Capote, you're going to find somebody who, who, I mean, we have our stuff, but there's so much stuff out there now. You type in Capote pattern, and you're going to find the pattern and, and how to and the whole, the whole, the whole nine yards pretty, pretty easily as well. Just, just so you know, Capote is spelled C-A-P-O-T-E. C-A-P-O-T-E is the Capote. Yeah. If you find something online that seems real difficult, you look at it. You find something that lost it or something else. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. What other thoughts do you have about, about getting, preparing, and, and having regalia? Uh, I want you to know there is a regalia inspection. Um, we are, there is an outpost where two things happen. One is you just you wear everything you made and you come and you get a you get a form picture, which is super cool. You made this stuff, you're at rendezvous, come get your picture taken and look good. Okay? The other thing is we do give you we, we have like a point system based on how much stuff you have. Um, that's just for fun. Just just so that you know the boys who go to a lot of work and effort, they, they kind of feel like they're getting something out of that, besides looking great. Um, but but there is a, a place up at rendezvous where you're gonna bring everything you have. And, and regalia even goes to like walking sticks and you know whatever else, uh, like where you might have a hatchet that you you know have covered and attached to your belt. Just walk, whatever you have that makes you look and feel like a mountain man. That's what we're looking for. Um, any other thoughts about regalia? Okay. Um, along with regalia, almost almost the same as regalia. Regalia is what you wear. Then there's all the other stuff that, that, you, that goes along with uh, rendezvous, like knives, but all the other stuff that you might have that you might get a hold of, um, all of that stuff ends up at the trading post. And I will tell you, right before I turn on the trading post, I will tell you that a lot of the stuff that you're making, you might say, well, where do I get cool beads? We all made, we all made medicine pouches, but where do I get some really cool beads to put on there? Don't worry about that. When you get up there, there's, there's a place that sells beads or trades and sells beads, there's also the trading post where kids that have made necklaces have traded those for a knife, and then there's all these necklaces. You can get a necklace, break it down, and all your boys will have beads. So there's there's ways to, to finish adorning whatever you make once you get up there. I'm going to turn the time over to Magic Mike, who works at the, our trading post, and Mike is filling in. Our, our uh, uh, trader Trader Joe is is not here tonight. But Magic Mike is filling in for him, and he's going to tell us all about the trading post and the trading post experience, which is one of the, the biggest experiences you're going to have up there. But, all right. Hey, guys. Uh, if you apologize, like I said, uh, Trader Joe, he's currently in Missouri right now. Figured it would be a little long of a drive to be here for this meeting, so he asked me to be here. Um, but like we're saying here, trading post is, I don't know, it's just an awesome time to, for us to see what you guys have been making on you guys. On short notice, but still plenty of time. You still got two and a half good months to make things and things, and it may not be a lot, but that's fine. We'd love to see it. We'd love to see the effort you boys put in to making something. Um, we've seen everything from small little kitchen knives that are, you know, changed or shaped around, or medicine bags that you make, or whatever else. It's bring it to us, let us take a look. And see, that's what traders used to do back in the day. They, hey, I had this. I need that. Okay, well, what can we do? What deal can we make? And a lot of it's just simply having the boys come up, talk to us, and just open up. We're there to, in a sense, just casually be there to help out and and work with the boys and, and just make them experience and enjoy being out there doing that. It's just another step in that that process. There. Um, a lot of times we'll have all sorts of things. We'll have. A bunch of different knives, tomahawks. Uh, we'll have beads. We'll have we have stuff traded from years and years past from different pocket knives. You may be having things around the house like you've got a whole little pocket knife. You had bring it, whatever. You know, like you want to bring things. Hey, this is kind of cool. I don't know what it does, but it's something. Again, back in those times, they had whatever they could to bring in because it may not be useful for me, but it's useful to that guy. So it's got worth to that guy. That we're, we're here to to help out and, and do what we can. So I don't have much here, but a lot of the stuff you'll see at the trading post, you see kind of right here on these tables here. Um, it's I mean, this will be my third 
rendezvous to go on, and it's just fun. It's great to see the creativity and, and the uniqueness that each boy has, and each ward's you know leaders come up with the kind of ideas, and you know they step from there. I, uh, my ward done. We've done knives before. We had a, a gentleman on our board who was good with woodworking, so they're like, hey, we got a bunch of knife blanks, and the boys went picked a different wood combo that they liked. Um, and then they shaped it and molded it for their handle for the knives that they had. And some of them came and started trading them. But others really liked what they made and, you know, I'm, I'm going to keep this. You know, and it's great. It, it's good to see the boys' blood, sweat, and tears in a lot of ways go into something and they find that value for themselves and what they put into it. Some are like, you know, I'll just make this slap together because my leader wanted me to and come trade it. That's fine. We'll be there, we'll see that. Like you said, it's, it is what it is. It's still blood, sweat, and tears that got put into it. But we like to see that little extra effort that, you know, that the story behind what, what went into this. Why did you pick this color? Why did you pick that? Why did you do this? Have the boys, you know, open up. A lot of times we'll get these shy guys that just come. Like, Sorry, but I, by the way, there's a lot of people around. You guys speak. I, I made this, and I did it, and, you know, we asked them questions, we kind of helped open it up. And all of a sudden, within a couple minutes, we got a full up conversation. This kid, well, then we, then we went over to the store, we found this, and we did that, and we, and all of a sudden, it's like, great, this kid who was super shy, super quiet, is now opening up. We're now getting to know this kid a little bit more, and all of a sudden, he comes back the next day. Hey, so I traded this from over here from this guy, and now we got this, and I really like that knife over there, and I'm like, this kid yesterday couldn't say more than a couple words to buy the mouse, and now this kid we can't get him to be quiet, you know. And we like seeing that. You know, we're that's what we're there for. We're there to, like I said, just be there for you guys. It's we got a bunch of stuff that every boy wants to come and see. I mean, first thing they do, they see the training post, bam, we got lines up the door like you're here for the activities, we'll be here. We're not leaving in. It, boys forget that. They think, oh, man, you guys are going to pack up. I'm going to miss everything. No, no, no. We're, gonna, we're usually the first there. We're usually last to leave. So we're always going to be there for you guys. We're there up until while we're packing. <laughs> you know, can I trade this? Yeah, sure. Let's, let's make a deal. You know, that, that's a, let's make a deal. We're always willing to make a deal. Don't ever think that this isn't going to be worth anything. Baloney. I'll, I'll bet you that it is. So it's... Like, and almost anything that you can possibly think of to want out there. And we've had guys saying, I don't have a coat, I don't have a shirt. So we got, we just got traded in a shirt. We just got a blanket over here. We've supplied guys with blankets because they forgot a blanket. Well, we happen to have a whole blanket available and he traded it tonight. Boom, he wasn't cold. Man. It happens. We don't usually do food because there's usually a, a post over there for food, so no worries on that. But it's just, a wonderful time to go out and just like I said, get to get to know your fellow campers out there, your fellow mountain men, and kind of <coughs> trade amongst each other, trade with us, and like I said, tell us your story, tell us why you're there, and, you know the things and ideas and what you're looking for. And, you know, a lot of extra crafts are done while there as well. It's, you start one thing, you see someone who has something that's really cool, you like, hey, I like how he did that. This I have something that's halfway there, and you have the other pieces I need. We're there for you. Um, it's, it's always going to have always a lot of leaders who show up there too, so don't think it's just for the boys as much as it is for the boys. Leaders are one of there too. You know, it's bring what you can, have fun, and just enjoy it. Now, remember again, you're there for the activities to learn how to start your fire, how to build this, how to do that. But like I said, we're always there for you. We're always going to willing to help you talk. As we might, do you guys trade for money? Do we, like, you want to purchase it live? Yeah, we take that all the time. So, it, you don't have to trade. It's not just trading only. You can purchase too. The, the prices are usually quite reasonable. Yes, sir. Quick story on that. This is for the... Will you stand up? Uh, the boys, we had a young man a few years ago who was a little entrepreneurial minded and spent maybe an extra 30 bucks on making stuff. Came home from trading and buying and eventually selling with $175 uh, 
$30. Yeah, I, I remember one kid, I think it was the last one here, so two years ago. Um, he took some copper, some copper wire, and he he just had the extra tails, and he started braiding them. He started making some very nice copper bracelets. Some had a little bead in the middle, so most of them were all braided, some came in a heart. I happened to get a couple for my daughters. They love them to this day. I had one kid a couple years ago who took some flint arrowheads and found he had some extra antlers because dad hunted and stuff, but he had extra pieces of line around. He made a couple knives, made some very neat, you know, simple leather sheaths with a little bit of uh, copper wiring to kind of place around the edge of the, the sheath right there. Hey, I have a couple of these. Fantastic. You know, he did that on his own time. It was, now, but like you said, he had some extra materials and resources. He probably, I mean, honestly, took maybe a total of 10 hours over a couple of months. But, I mean, like I said, the value of those things, is, I mean, they were $35 worth of stuff, which we had no problem, actually, no problem at all. And some leader came around and said, how much is that? And he just paid cash for it, 35 bucks right there. Gone. He was happy, the kid was happy for a few extra minutes that the kid had. So, like I said, every kid is always going to have different situations, different resources, different everything else. So if you have a bit of a knack for creativity, for artsy, this or that, don't ever think that all oh, what I'd like to do is important. It's not cool. No, it's, it is. Art is art. Regardless of what form it comes in, whether it's something tangible or you know, look at we all sorts of different things there. I mean, it's crazy to see the once we pull everything out of the, the trailer of what we got, we're like, oh, I remember that. All of a sudden, stories come back of when we got that, the, you know, what kid traded in, we remember faces. We love hearing that and seeing that. And like I said, it's the same thing. It's, I remember when I was your guys' age and I got, you know, was going through the training like myself and the deals that I made with Trader Joe himself. And, and just the little things, I thought, this is just a little bit of a pocket but I found something else I liked and just the deals and actually the conversation I mean, I still remember that I was, gosh, over 20 some odd years ago. But I still, you know, I still remember that exact moment. I mean, well, like a good half hour in between and everything, talking with my leader. He said, look what I got here. He's like, where'd you get that? You know, my leader was very shocked. And, that's cool. It is again yeah, talking, mingling with each other. It's it's there to be an experience for the boys <coughs> as much as it is for the leaders. We're there to, to do whatever we can. Yeah, just have, have fun. It is fun. Anybody else have any questions? Cool. Fantastic. All right. Okay. Thank you, Ben and Mike. Appreciate you. So start looking around. You got marbles, jacks. You know, you got stuff at home. You got stuff in, in, in buckets and boxes. Uh, my kids, I was pulling this stuff out of their rendezvous stuff. Like every time we, we go on trips, they buy little necklaces that end up breaking and they just throw them all in a drawer. We got tons. They've got tons of broken necklaces. They're all beads. It's a broken necklace, but you bring it up to a trading post. Now they're beads that can be used for something. So just go through go through stuff that's junk. Um, uh, what, what about your, your, your dad's like original Swiss Army knife? Can we trade that? If you dare, sure. Just make sure, just make sure to talk to your dad. There's been lots of stories where kids are trading stuff, and they go, you should go to the back and talk to your dad about that. Yeah, it's, you should go tell your leader that you, uh, that you're trying to trade his his X Y Z because yeah, there's, we know what that's worth. Yeah, we've had a couple boys come up and oh, my dad gave me this, and I want to trade it in. We're like, like us knowing a little bit more of the knowledge of what it is. It's are you sure? You know, it's kind of it's let them know. It don't. Be careful with what they bring. Some kids will bring, uh, I found this all around the house, and yeah, yeah, and uh, we get called, like, you still got that? It's like, mm -hmm. So it's just, kind of be careful with you. Yeah, we've had some kids bring it. Awesome. Yeah. Just a reiteration, the throwing stars, the machetes, please. Yeah, so we're not bringing the dangerous stuff. Even though the knives we're making are, are, are dangerous, all, all the knives we make that we bring need to be in a sheet. So make a sheet for your knives. But we're not bringing, um, ninja stars, we're not bringing throwing knives, we're not bringing uh, machetes or, or big long swords, we're not bringing things because all these spears, um, these things will just cause cause accidents and they have we're, in the past. We're looking for period type yeah, knives. Period, period type knives. And really, the best knives and knives that you guys, I know it's super cool to have this big giant, you know, 
crocodile Dundee type knife. <laughs> but but the biggest thing is the, the knives that got used the most were all about four inches. Those are the knives you'll use for about every single task in camp and, and all day long. That's a real knife. That's a knife you're actually going to use and you're going to keep and you're going to keep and use throughout your life. These big giant sword type knives, they're, they're really not usable uh, unless I guess you're saying. So, so think about that when you're making a knife. Make something for quality. Make something you're actually going to use. Make something you're going to keep around uh, and be functional as well. Yeah, question up here. Yes, you can bring a bullwhip. You can you can make a bullwhip. You can bring a bullwhip. Trade a bullwhip. We have, we we have a bullwhip outpost. There is an outpost. Oh, but we would be a special place to do it. We would like you to reserve using your bullwhip in the outpost to out, do that. Um, what we don't want is we don't want guys being excited just using one as as people are walking by and getting and getting whipped. There is we will have a designated place to use it. They'll teach you how to use a bullwhip. Um, so if you bring one, have one, trade for one. Go there, learn how to use it, and have some fun. Please. One more thing, just for beads, if you want some really cool beads, authentic type stuff, there's a place called Bernie's Beads. It's on Guadalupe and it's about out of school. Bernie's Beads. Good. And that's that Guadalupe and out of school. But look that up. Are they have a website? Southwest, Southwest, Southwest corner. Yeah, Southwest yeah. corner of out of school in Guadalupe, Bernie's Beads. Good. Good, that's awesome, because then you can go and just pick out what you want. <clears throat> okay, awesome. That's, that's the trading post. Trading post is a ton of fun. Um, make stuff, gather stuff, work on your regalia, have, have regalia. The most important thing is it's an activity that, one, will make you feel unified while you're up there and get you invested into what we're doing. But two, it, it gives you experiences leading up to rendezvous where your where your form gets to work together, pull together, do something new, learn how to do some leather working, learn how to do some metal working, um, you know, work with different people in your border state that they don't know already. So it, it, they're great experiences. So we want you to have great experiences and we want you to feel good when you're up there. Okay, that's that's regalia, that's trading post. Um, Registration. We're, we're coming. We're coming up on on the registration. So registration is at Mountain Man, or sorry, MesaMountainMan.com. That's where you're gonna go. MesaMountainMan.com, and that's where you're gonna register. Payments. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go there and you're gonna say, we've got now. There's 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 two types of registration. There's staff. That's us or the priests that are going up, they're going to go up with the state leaders and work the outpost, their staff. And then you've got all of your teachers and all of your teachers' form advisors um, that are going up. They're going up as participants. Okay? And so there's the, the, that's the two different categories. So you're going to, you're going to go in and you're going to say, we've got this many um, teachers going up, we've got this many um, teachers' advisors going up. And you're going to fill those in and it'll calculate and give you a price. Then you're going to write a check, and the next meeting um, we have, you're going to bring that check. Okay? You're going to make that check out to the Kimball State. Is that, is that correct? Like, is that right? That's me. Mesa Kimball State. Mesa Kimball State. Thank you. So you're going to make that out to the Mesa Kimball State. And all this is on, on, on the website as well. So you're going to go to masonmountainman.com, you're going to see all this and the instructions will be on there. Yes, I need to know that when I'm getting money, what board and what state, because I don't know all your states are awards. Awesome. So on that check, on the bottom, you can write mountain man, write your board and state on there. That way we know where it's coming from, because later when we say, well, we, we submitted a check for this much, it's going to be hard to track that down. There so, should be a registration form attached with that check, right? Yes. Which should have that information as well. Yeah, and that'll 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 print off once you once you once you fill everything out, you can print that off, make a copy of it, and you can put that with it even. Absolutely. Sometimes the awards will let you take that form that shows you registered this many boys and leaders and leaders of pride, you give it to your ward clerk and then you catch your board check for it so that you don't have to do your own yep. in your reverse. Good. This is this is paid for on a ward basis, not a state basis, unless your state has figured out something different. It's just your ward, you're gonna go in and you're gonna say, here's our leaders, here's our boys, here's what it comes out to, and then you're gonna just You guys have to have to make your decision. Frankly, since I'm the one that's gonna be counting all the money, I would rather the states gather all the money for the wards and give me one check for each state. But yeah, you know, 
if if your state is that organized and, and, and ask your your ask your state representative about that, if you're gonna do that, that's great. Um, in the past that hasn't been the case. And if you're not that organized, we, we would rather have you just pay to pay to be done than waiting on one board and have the whole state not pay. Because the big thing is is by September 1st, the prices increase. So before September 1st, the cost is $25 a boy, $15 a liter. So you know, just so you know, we're not, we're not doing this to make money on this. This is to cover costs of doing this. This is a big, big, big event. Um, and and it, it is tremendously um, uh, well done. But it's, it's $15 per liter, $25 per boy. After September 1st, it's $30 a liter, $20, sorry, $30 a boy, $20 a liter. And the, there's, there's two reasons the price goes up. One is because it's an incentive to just get registered. We need everyone just to get registered. Once we know our numbers, then we can really start doing the orders of things that we need to do orders on. We're already in for time. The second reason is because the longer we wait, the more things are going to cost us. And the price, even for us, goes up. So, so um, that's why that goes up. I have a camera over here. So is the website getting updated? It's 2019. Don't worry about the date. We can't use the. Can we use this to register and pay? Yes. Here? Yeah. We pay well, no, we're not going to pay there. So you're going to register. So you're going to go on there and say, I have this many boys, I have this many liters. Here's it's going to work out the price. Then you're going to print that off, and then you're going to show up here at the next meeting with the check and you're going to pay by check. In order to do payment online, the church requires you to use a specific vendor in Utah who charges like 15 percent, which is ridiculous. So you're only accepting checks. So no online. So online, payments. the price is different. It, it's a, no, there's no. No, he's saying no. no. Is it price? Is it showing the price? Yeah, it says still forty-five for youth and fifteen for adult. But this also says two thousand nineteen. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we'll 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 get that updated. But it's twenty-five per per youth and fifteen per liter. But it will go up to thirty per. In 20 years. So, just, just to reiterate, I mean, we, we really need to know numbers because we are trying to order stuff right now. Right now. We're in the middle of it. If, right if you would please just at least go do the registration online on the website. Yeah, so that helps so much. So, the, the, I'll take the price tonight. Thank you. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> the, the big thing is, and we need to make sure that we're talking to our state representatives and talking to the other units in our in our in our state. But the big thing is, is that we just we at least get on and we say and we put that on there. Here's how many youth. Here's how many leaders, and get that on there. The payment is September first, but as early as you can, just put your boys on there, put your leaders on there, so we know who uh, who's who we're working with. We can start making purchases ourselves to get ready for this. Because again, the price goes up substantially, and not only that, but but we may not get stuff in time. So we need to we need to start making these purchases. Yeah. What is each boy you collect on the radio? Or? That's going to be up to your board. And in your case, probably yes. You should start rolling lawns now. <laughs> I, that's going to be that's going to be up to your board. Um, I would imagine probably not. That will probably be in the young men's budget because it's a, a super activity for the young men. But that's that's going to be up to each board to figure out. Okay. Um, okay, so that's that's the big thing. So get registered. You're going to hear a lot about that. And you're going to get a lot of emails about that. Uh, hopefully, it's, uh, hopefully you get that taken care of. Our next meeting, just so you know, our next meeting we're looking at August 26th. And August August 26th is our Dutch oven cookout night. So we're going to be outside. Um, we're going to be testing and tasting a bunch of Dutch oven stuff. There is a Dutch oven cook-off up at Rendezvous. So we want you to, to, to know about Dutch ovens, to, to see different things you can make in Dutch ovens, to taste test stuff from Dutch ovens. It's going to be a lot of fun. And since it's night time, and since we're out of time, we're going to teach you how to do some flint and steel as well. And it's awesome at night because you can actually see what's going on. So we're gonna, it's going to be a lot of fun. So make sure that your presidencies are here. For those of you that are here, thank you for being here. We know that you've got a lot going on in your lives. So thank you for being here. Thanks for participating. Take this information back to your forums and get them excited about some of these things. Help them know what you want to start working on. Um, jump online, start, start looking around, and get some ideas, and start having fun. All right? Uh, any, any other questions or thoughts? All right. Let's uh, let's go ahead and end with a closing prayer. Do you want to give us a closing prayer?
Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day um, that we could gather together to talk about that man. And please help us to be safe on our way home. And uh, please uh, bless the missionaries that they can keep the gospel. And please bless those who need that they can get whatever help they need. And we Amen. Thank you, Adam. Um, what we're going to do is this last partition. We're going to close this and have a meeting with all of the stake leaders back there. Uh, everyone up, up in here, we'll go ahead and put these chairs away. We'll leave those chairs. But if you can help put these chairs away, that would be really helpful. Thank you. Uh, these all you can stand for on the side.